Hello, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Sharon, aka the Mel Nostalgic Runner, and we are back. And um, if the video looks a little different, um, forgive me ahead of time. I got a new phone and um, a brand brand new phone where the videos are amazing. But the problem is the new technology with this phone and everything is not compatible with my software because, yeah, the camera quality is. It's top tier, but I need to figure some things out behind the scenes when it comes to my editing software and everything. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. That's just a side war side note. But this is my this is your girl Melness. This is um my channel, Melness Nostalgic Runner, aka um Sharon. So Sharon, aka Melness Nostalgic Runner. I said that really backwards because I ain't gonna hold you. Me talking about me about my camera kind of threw me off, but. Anyway, that's not why we're here. We are back for the, a new show that I'm reviewing. Well, not new, but new for me reviewing it. The Real Housewives of Orange County. And this is the new season, season premiere, um, season 18. And for those who don't know, this is the OG. This is why there's 18 seasons. This is what got... The Real Housewives franchise started. So there wouldn't be Real Housewives of, you know, Atlanta or any of those other, um, you know, cities if it wasn't for this one taking off the way it did. And it, we know it did. And what I will tell you right away is that <laughs> when I tell you this season looks good, this season looks good. So, um, without further ado, let's get into it. Um, so this episode is called X's and, um, OC's and, um, <laughs> um, so this really gets every, so what we're doing here is everything's getting caught up. So the very, at the very beginning, the major story that is coming out of this season, that is going to be the main thing for this season is Shannon Storm Bador. And when I tell you she's a storm, she's a storm. Um, <laughs> Shannon, I like, throughout all the times I've watched Real Housewives of Orange County, I've loved her for the most part. Last season was the first season where I just started looking at her kind of funny. And this season, I'm not quite sure what to make of her yet, but she's my airy sister, so I get the energy. If we give in as an Aries, as a, someone who's also an Aries, when you give in to your indulgence and your party girl ways and you don't check it, <laughs> you, burn, you burn yourself and everything around you. It is giving Dark Phoenix energy. That is how <laughs> being my sign can be at times and how it is to be me at times. It's like... If I'm on the right path, oh, we're doing great. But when I'm in my toxic bag, oh, 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 oh. self-destructive as ever. <laughs> and so that was kind of her last season. And this is hopefully going to be her redemption season. But seeing the previews of how this season's going to go, I don't know about that. But anyway, so let's start recapping her DUI because she got DUI. So this. I, this is why I said all this because <laughs> Lord and the reason why I'm saying it this way for those who've never watched the show that these are older women so Shannon is 58 years old so this is someone who you know that's that's kind of crazy <laughs> Uh, it's her first DUI, so it is that, but it's also 2020, you know, three when this happened. And in, in Orange County, where there are Lyfts, Ubers, and because she's been on the show for so long, she can afford to get a driver and whatnot. So, I mean, you know. But anyway, this is pretty much the aftermath of that. And, um... Anyway, let's get more into it and get into the meat and potatoes because 
There's a lot of things that we found out in this episode, how all that took place. And we're also seeing the beginning of the aftermath of all that. And it looks like that's not the only drama we're going to be seeing this, seeing this season. Um, yeah, this first episode, if you did not get a chance, didn't get the chance to watch it and you just went straight to the review, I'm telling you, go and watch it. It is good. It is so good. I know this is like, for those who are more like watching the black shows, I get it. But we don't know when the Real Housewives of Atlanta is coming back. We don't, and Mary to Medicine isn't here. Potomac, you know, a couple not so good seasons. This is probably going to be really the only one where we're going to get the drama, to be honest. And, uh, and Dubai, I'm sorry, I just never got into it. I still haven't watched it yet, so... This is where we are. This is where we are. <laughs> and also to, oh, in Summer House Martha's Vineyard. We don't know if that's coming back or not because it says on pause. And we know Bravo used to like to use that word for canceled or fired. They use pause interchangeably. So no, no one ever knows what that means. So there's that. Anyway, let's get into the show more in detail now. So with the episode starting with all the bloggers covering the Shannon Bedore's DUI. I, and forgive me if I say OWI because some places it's called that, but it's DUI. And um, so for those who are not aware, she got the DUI, but it's not like she just got the DUI and that was it. She actually ran to someone's house. Okay. So it's, a, it's bad, bad. It's not just a, um, I fell asleep at the wheel at a stoplight. It's not, um, and you know, I had the car in park. It's not any of that. Not that I know anyone who's done that. Maybe I do. Um, but it's not, she, she literally could have hurt and killed someone. And she had her dog in the car too. Her dog somehow did not get hurt. And she actually re-describes what happens later on in the episode but we also saw the, we see the pictures in this episode for the first time of how she looked. And she was bloodied up. And she broke her arm. Like, the fact that she ended up coming out of it hurt, that tells you something. Because typically, unfortunately, and fortunately, I guess depending on how you look at it, when someone who's under the influence drives drunk, typically they end up hurting or killing someone else. But not, normally things don't happen with them necessarily because you know, they're loose. But, yeah, she still ended up doing some damage. So, I'm wondering how hard she hit that house for her to still be hurt like that. But she's lucky to make it out alive. She's lucky she didn't hurt anyone else. It's a whole thing. But we also, after that, they then go from there to talking, having the typical Real Housewives montage. We see Shannon actually doing yoga with um, Jen. Because Jen, who was a new addition to the cast last season, she has a yoga studio. So she's actually instructing the yoga. Shannon looks like she's actually doing good and in good health. But we'll find out more about that as the episode can, as really the season goes. I mean, the episode is one thing, but we'll, we'll find out. Um, we see Gina cooking with her kids. Emily looking amazingly healthier than ever um which i hope she's healthy um with um shang after a workout um tamra and eddie and their weird sex bander talk <laughs> i don't know i i'm not really a tamra fan so there's that um so i'm a little biased when i talk about tamra so there's a there's a little hint there um heather and terry kind of recapping we see we see them and yet again another new house heather is the bougie one of the group and heather borderline could probably be on a different franchise she could probably easily be easily be on the real housewives of um, beverly hills and i'll go more into that when we get more into her individual scene but i'll go from there um and then from there, we go into the first scene. So the first scene, we have Jen and Emily joining Tamara at the gym, um, catching up. 
you know, about to work out. And Tamara, um, I, we find out from this scene, Tamara splits her time between the OC and her other place at Big Bear. Um, cause for those who don't know, outside of Tamara's antics or whatever, she's really, her and Eddie are outdoorsy people. And so they like to do kind of like outdoorsy, rugged type stuff. And so the Big Bear is kind of like this winter type of inventory place, you know. I wouldn't be there necessarily because that's not really my vibe. I don't really like the winter. But I can see how aesthetically that could be pretty. Because <laughs> um, I think Tamara snowboards and stuff too. Like she seems like that type. Anyway, um, and then we have Jen um, kind of recapping. Because we we met Jen through Tamara. They were supposed to be friends, even though Tamara did what she does a lot, which is backstab um, Jen, put all her business on Front Street and made um, and made her made a storyline out of her. Um, and so Jen now is like, I am loving her from a distance. We I now see her, and um, so they basically small talk. But she doesn't tell or get into the get let Tamara get in the business. I'm not sure how true that is because we'll see how the season progress. But that's how Jen is feeling about Tamara at the moment because of everything that happened last season. How Tamara threw her and her relationship with Orion up under the bus, and the up will. <laughs> I'll also explain that later too because. Although Tamara wasn't right by how she went about it, she's not really wrong. Anyway. Um, and then Emily tells us briefly about her weight loss. And as you see throughout this episode, they also they show her before and after pictures. But they also recap how she looked last season and recap older pictures of her. Emily looks amazing. And Emily explained what she did. She was honest. She said... Partially Ozempic, partially lipo, and mainly maintaining by going to the gym. And now she's addicted to the gym. And I can tell. I can tell she's doing all three because she looks amazing. Um, when you just have the Ozempic look, um, you look sickly. Typically, if you're just doing that. Um, and it sounds like she only did that temporarily. And even though... It's kind of messed up that all these celebrities and people with money are using Ozempic for weight loss. I don't know her health history or not. Emily was a big girl. So maybe with her being, I mean, who knows? She could have actually be, she could have been pre-diabetic. So she actually probably could have qualified for having the Ozempic for the right reasons. I don't know. But if you look at her previous seasons, and I don't want to like, Put that on people. I'm trying to give her a benefit of doubt because I really don't like hearing that that's what celebrities and influencers or whatnot are doing. But we know that's what a lot of them are doing. And I kind of want to like Emily. So that's the other reason why I'm trying to give her some bail because she's kind of the most real. She, her and two of the other cast members are really, really real. But I don't know if The Real Housewives is the right show for them to be this kind of personality. Um, Jen's also kind of the same way. and Same thing with Gina. I don't think. But we have to keep in mind the OC is different from other franchises. You're going to get the more normal-ish housewives on this show. Anyway, I said all that to say Emily looks good. And yeah. Anyway. So then from a dual scene is occurring. So while this is happening, Shannon's actually with her kids and in her new apartment. So she um, got rid of her house, um, you know, family house, and she moved to a three bedroom apartment because now she's empty nester. And now, well, she's also no longer with John Jansen, which is kind of where we saw how I'll be honest with you, and we'll go more into it later on. The John Jansen of it all is where Shannon lost me. I feel like a lot of her issues came from him, along with other things. And we'll get into that more. But anyway, 
she's talking to her kids and she immediately starts breaking down. Um, oh, we get updates about all her kids because all her kids are basically out of the house. One is traveling all around the world. The other one lives in New York and another one, um, I believe, goes to Baylor. And so none of them are even in the state. They're all just there visiting her and kind of just, you know, recapping her on things. And from when this is filmed, because of the events that Heather has later on, I think this is around the New Year's of when they were filming this. I'm not 100% sure, but I'm almost positive this is around the time of that is. Um, so the beginning of 2024, basically. Um, so then she breaks down with her kids and how embarrassed she is about her DUI. And her kids are trying to, their best to comfort her because, I mean, her kids are no longer kids. They're adults. And um, all girls, by the way. And... So while she's talking to her kids about that situation with the DUI and John of it all, um, the ladies in the dual scene are also discussing Shannon. Um, Jen is trying to be a supportive friend and says, you know, and it's kind of recapping a lot of the ladies. You know, you know, she is looking good. Like she was at the yoga class and like, and then they asked, did she fall? Because Shannon's notorious for being really, really clumsy. But I think that has a lot to do with her extracurricular activity behavior that's, that causes her to do that. And Jen's like, no, she she's doing good. And and as we, we saw in the video, it looked like she was doing all right. Like, she wasn't doing her falling thing she normally does. Um, because that is a common theme with Shannon. She falls a lot. <laughs> if, you, if you watched the show, she falls a lot. Again, that's actually kind of another weird Aries thing. We're clumsy. <laughs> For how athletic, and even for me, for even how, right now I'm a little bit on the slim thick side, or thick, depending on what part of the country we are at, but I, I think I'm, I think I'm more on the thick side, uh, I don't really think I'm slim thick, but I'm trying to get back to being more athletic or slim thick, that's actually the goal I'm trying to go for, but anyway, the reason why I bring that up is because I feel like <laughs> with Shannon especially, she is, um, a, I'm saying this because when we're, when you're drinking a lot, you could tell <laughs> for one. Um, I think that in general, I don't think that's the Zodiac sign thing at all. I think that's just the thing in general. Number one, number two, no matter how in shape I am or not in shape I am, I am the most, I'm so clumsy. For how much I athletic I am, because you know I do the ultras and all that, I run all the time, and I do triathlons, I swim, I'm really into fitness, health and wellness, check out my other um, playlists that I have on this channel, cheap plug, on all the things I'm into, but um, with that being said, I'm very clumsy, <laughs> I can trip on air, um, I know this when I'm in my most healthiest balanced state, and I'm not relying on other influences that aren't the best for me. That's when it's not happening as much. I find that that's a thing. I don't know if that's a thing for all Aries, but I just know a lot of us were clumsy. <laughs> just say. I mean, I twisted my ankle in Puerto Rico, like on my birthday, and this is now starting to finally get better. Last year, I broke my toe, like. <laughs> clumsy i always have something going on when it comes to like my body like my body loves to betray me when it comes to like the health and wellness of it all but it's also because i am clumsy but anyway <clears throat> i i didn't want to make that thing but shannon is known for being clumsy so i just wanted to throw that out there but part of it might be the fact that and it's been alluded this whole episode that she might still have a drinking problem anyway so, Tamara addresses fairly quickly, but not really. We're going to get probably more into later on why Tamara is no longer with the Trace Amigas. And so, Tamara, Shannon, and Vicky, and Vicky's like the OG of all the housewives. She's like the original housewife um, <laughs> of, of all the shows. Although she's no longer on this show full-time or even really friend of, she makes appearances on this show still to this day. 
just because. I think this is just something she likes to do. She's kind of attention. She's a little bit of attention whore. There's that. But anyway, they have this thing called the Trace Amigas, and it's very much drinking related, you know? It's about them taking tequila shots. Well, they're supposed to go on tour right when the DUI of it all happened. And Tamara just was like, no, that's not a good idea. And so, and she also alleges that she caught Shannon trying to drink, even though she's not supposed to be drinking right now because she's on probation for three years for doing what she did. Um, Typically with the DUI, if you don't harm anyone or anything like that, usually it's your first offense. I think in most states it's just a year probation. But because I think hers was like um, a manslaughter charge, I think there was, I think it wasn't a manslaughter charge, but I think it got brought up. That's why she's on probation for three years, because what she did was way messed up. Like she was, she, you know, she hit, she, she basically almost entered the house. Um. So, because of all that, the Trace Amigas, you know, um, Vicky and Shannon continued the tour without her. And um, so, yeah, we're going to see where that, <laughs> how that goes this season. But Tamara basically mentioned she lost a lot, a lot of respect for Shannon after how all that transpired. And um, because Tamara is very much against, you know, drunk driving. Which I agree with her. I'm against it too. I think it's really, really messed up. But I will say this. <sighs> write message, wrong messenger. When it comes to Tamara, when it comes to everything that's Tamara related, always write message, wrong messenger. And the reason why I say this is because she is like one of the most crass, disrespectful people on this show. And she does a lot of things and... If you throw it back in her face about how she's being all messed up and stuff, oh, 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 but at the same time, she's so quick to get her own high horse. And for me, I can't stand people like that. Like, if you if you can call a thing a thing, you need to allow it where others can call you out on your BS too, and she don't allow that. But anyway, I hopefully this whole season, I don't slander, I don't continuously go off about Tamara, but I feel like that's going to happen this season. So just a fair warning. But anyway, so Shannon then, so back on the dual scene, Shannon's talking with her kids about the John and Alex, Alexis of it all, Alexa of it all. Uh, so Alexis, she's a former housewife that was on this show. Um, and most of us know her as Jesus Jugs because of Tamara's, Tamara's um, clap back at her. They, um, she called her Jesus Jugs and that just kind of stuck. And so um, Shannon is kind of venting about she has issues with um, if, um, she feels weird about how Alexis and John are dating now because it happened real quick and by the way for those who have never watched the show John this guy that they're all kind of talking about because also Alexis makes an appearance um she's a she's an official friend of this season so we're gonna see a lot of her this season the fact that they're like kind of going back and forth over this dude's complete basula that's crazy <laughs> because John's nobody, and it's clear he's an attention whore, and he just found a prettier woman to, that he can use, in my opinion. That's how I'm seeing it. Um, and apparently I'm not no, alone in my thoughts when it comes to that, and we'll, we'll get more into that as the episode transpires. But anyway, um, and then Tamara... Both Tamara and Shannon in both their dual scenes talk about Alexis and the lawsuit because the other issue is that Alexis' ex-husband that used to be on the show. So when Alexis was on the show originally, she was married um, to this guy named Bill. I believe his name was Bill, um, which kind of had her being like a super Jesus freak about things. And I'm not saying that to be insulting, by the way. Um, I do. I, I'm not. I'm, hey, I just want to make sure I'm not offending anyone. I'm saying it because 
She's aesthetically looks one way, but her energy was very nun-like, but she's aesthetically looks kind of like your typical um, blonde bimbo look. So envision someone who looks like a blonde bimbo, but is speaking and acting like a nun. The continents don't meet. So hence why Jesus jugs became a thing. Um, because by the way, clearly these jugs, the jugs that she has are not, they were brought. <laughs> they are not natural. Anyway, um, so I mentioned all that because her ex-husband ended up um, suing both Shannon and uh, Tamara on something they said. I don't remember if it was on the podcast or on the show, but they... As a result, both of them lost a lot of money. Um, so that's also going to be something that gets discussed later on this episode of their thoughts on that. Because Tamara and um, Shannon's views on it are not the same. So there's that. Okay, so then the next scene, we have Heather and Terry with their new house in Beverly Hills. So yes, they have a, another new place. Um Last season, they purchased, they sold their house in the OC for a crazy amount. It's now no longer, I think, the largest purchase, though, or largest sell. Since then, more has happened with that because of, you know, how the housing market and everything's going these days. Um, but they do have their, they still, we find out they still have their L.A. penthouse that we saw last season. But they now have this new house in um, Beverly Hills, and it is a remodeling project. They So what Shannon and Terry did, they ended up putting staging furniture in the house and moved in while they were remodeling the house at the same time. Um, along with that, we also find out that they have a second penthouse um, at, at the Bay Club, that is really, really close to Terry, um, Terry's um, office and to his mom's house. And when I mentioned Terry, Shannon, uh, so um, Heather, um, Heather's husband, Terry, he might look familiar to you. Um, for those who watch E, he's the plastic surgeon off of Botched. So, um, Heather and Terry have a very huge long-standing um, relationship with NBC Universal, clearly, because he has a hit show, Botch, that he's been on for a super long time. And then also, um, you know, Heather has her thing here. But anyway, so clearly he makes good money. He's a, he's a very high-in-demand plastic surgeon whose office is actually in L.A. and has been the whole entire time. So he's been going back and forth probably this whole entire time. Um, or maybe he had a rental. I don't imagine he would have had a rental. No, no. Because now now that now that we're having this conversation, because we're talking right now. Aren't we talking? We're talking. Um, he said that this um, new penthouse that he just got also is the closest he's ever worked to the office. I mean, lived close to the office. So... Technically, that place is for him, for him to get back and forth to the office better and for him to be close to his mom. But then they have all this. So there's a lot going on. And then we also get an update about um, two of the kids that are gone. So the twins are gone in college, but then they still have the two remaining kids that are still living with them. So that's why they had to get a bigger house for that, along with the penthouse for once they are empty nesters. Um, so there's that. <laughs> and we also find out that they're in a very, um, the two kids are still um, living with them are in a very, very nice um, school in the L.A. area. So, yeah, that's pretty much update with that. Next, we have Gina arriving at Emily's house. Emily's also going through a um, home renovation, but hers is taking a little bit longer. Probably a little bit more traditional of how long it would take because... Emily does well for herself, but she doesn't have Terry and Heather's money. Like, um, Shane is a lawyer. Both of them are lawyers, I believe. Shane and um, Emily are lawyers. 
So that's how um, it shames her husband. And um, so we also find out Gina and her real estate venture because last season Gina got um, Gina and Travis, her boyfriend, they both became licensed real estate agents. And Gina's Gina's getting the getting the work and has been selling houses and been doing a good job with that. Um, we also find out that um, so besides that, Gina and Emily, of course, discuss um, Shannon's DUI. And Gina, I am <laughs> I'm gonna hold you, and this is really messed up. Once I found out that Ashley, not Ashley, well, wow. once I found out that Shannon got that DUI, I immediately thought of Gina because Gina last season and the way Shannon was so condescending about Gina's one DUI that she got way, I think it's been like six or seven years ago. Like it's been a while. Gina hasn't gotten in trouble ever since then. And Gina doesn't even drink anymore. Okay. She, she is California sober is what she likes to call it. Like she still, you know, partakes in the um, libations of it all, but she doesn't drink and drive and she doesn't, it sounds like she doesn't even libate and drive. Like it seems like she's the type of person who does the libations at home and keeps it cute. Anyway, my point is, Last season, unprovoked, Shannon was giving her hell and bringing all that stuff up again as if it happened yesterday. So the way karma will sometimes get you, or the way the universe will universe, I wouldn't call it karma. I would say the way the universe will sometimes universe. I'm pretty sure that is literally how Gina's feeling right now. She's like, <laughs> so we'll see how that goes. But then we also do find out that Gina and Travis are not doing well. They're struggling. And last season when Heather was trying to be friends with Gina, I feel like Heather was alluding to this for a while. And Gina just was refusing to listen. And lo and behold, I feel like Heather was right. So Gina and Travis are struggling. And we'll see in a and later um, seeing what it's looking like. But I don't think Gina's being completely honest about why they're struggling. She's saying that, um, I think par she's partially being honest, but not the way. Honest, but not so, way. so for those who don't know who haven't watched the show, Gina and Travis got together right after her marriage pretty much dissolved with her ex-husband and her ex-husband was kind of a hot mess um and it was very much on the media it was bad it was very very bad and travis apparently had similar issue well not his he had baggage to on his side so two newly divorced people got together and became married again pretty much and they've been together for four years now. Now, just off of how I just described that, does that sound like something that will last? I will say this. Just outside looking in, that just seemed like something where upward battle will take place. And definitely that is what it is. And I think now that Gina has finally got her stuff together because she has gotten her stuff together. She, you know, she's selling houses and all that. I, well, this is also the real housewife, so we're not following the husbands or the boyfriends. I didn't hear anything about how Travis is selling anything. And it's been alluded throughout the whole time that her and Travis got together that Gina, even though she doesn't have all, she's probably like the, um, aesthetically, she looks like she's a broke one of the cast, even though she, <laughs> later, we're going to find out later on this episode, we don't, I don't think that's, that, that's not true. Someone else is. <laughs> this was a shady episode. I ain't going to hold you. I feel like it was very shady. But anyway, so 
Gina is very, she presents herself very much like your regular girl. Regular, regular girl. Like regular Robin. Kind of like that, but VOC. That's, that will be the way to describe her. But it seems like fiscally she's pretty responsible and knows how to like make a dollar out of 50. You know, that's the type, that's the vibe I get from her. Um, but she also does seem like a social climber. So that's the drawback with her. But at the same time, it seems like she's a social climber with a good heart. So pick a side on how you feel about all that. Do what you will with that. Travis, her boyfriend, on the other hand, seems like he kind of would be okay with being um, a stay-at-home dad. And I think he was actually for a while. I think for a while he didn't have a job or something like that. I think that's, I think he's the one who didn't have the job. So aesthetically, that doesn't look like a good look or vibe. Um, so yeah, um, now that the economy's getting tough and Jean is pulling her own weight, this is my theory. I feel like Jean is sick of pulling her own weight because when, when I mention baggage, I don't mean to say in a bad way, but they both have kids. And so they're like literally the Brady Bunch living in California. And I don't care if you're a housewife or not. Living in California is not cheap. It's not for the cheap. And even people we're finding out now due to the aftermath of 2020 and everything else, actors and actresses can't even afford to live in California anymore. And they're also not even making the money that we thought they were making. So you think a housewife or any of these other people that are presenting glitz and glamour can afford all that if they have a whole entire family to house and it's not just them? So we find out in this scene with Emily that she is thinking about house hunting but just for her and the kids and they go separate living separately after they live together for four years and this is why I broke all this down because I don't think that's the I don't think she's telling us the whole reason I think the other piece that I just mentioned here I think that's the real reason why she wants to do that because I think she's also has she's she is realizing that she's growing by herself and evolving by herself I think that's where she's at with it. But we'll see where this goes. But I'll go a little bit further about it. I kind of gave you more than I thought I was going to give you at the beginning. But we'll we'll sprinkle. We'll put the cherry on top when it comes to that scene with her and Travis later on this episode. Speaking of the newer housewife, Jen. So Jen um, is now meeting up with uh, Ryan um, for dinner. And I say, uh, Ryan, for those who met Jen and Ryan for the first time, Ryan just even on the screen gives out sleeves. And we're going to find out throughout this season. I don't know about Jen's picker. And when I mean picker, I mean her, her, her choice of picking men. Um, I think she was a little hot in the pants. And I think that's why she ended up going with Ryan. And I think she also has a little bit of a self-esteem issue. By a little bit, I think a lot of it. Even though she's beautiful, platinum blonde type of girl. But I think it's just her with the baggage. You'd be surprised how psychologically that could just mess how people think of things. But anyway. So we find out her and her husband are still not divorced yet. Her ex-husband, well, yeah, husband. They're still not divorced yet. Um... It's been a struggle to get the finances to figure out how much she's owed and all that for this divorce. Her husband will no longer has a job because she was working, he was working for her family. And now, and also too, she has a ton of financial issues. And for those who might be following things in the blogs, we kind of already knew she was having a ton of these financial issues. And it was actually kind of Easter egg by Tamara herself, her friend, that she had financial issues. And <clears throat> what am I saying? Tamara called out during, I think it was the reunion, that Jen was, fake, was wearing fake labels all last season. And, 
you know, to kind of give the keeping up with the Joneses look. And I will, I'm not going to hold you. It, I was judging after I found out what was going on with her finances and seeing how she's moving this episode. I was judging because for one, she doesn't, she didn't know, according to her, she didn't know that she owed. So um, the house that they were living at last season, they couldn't renew the lease because the owner wanted to get the house back. Okay. This, the new house that Gina, the realtor, set her up with, she's getting evicted. Talking about messiness, because I'll be honest, Gina will be one of the last people I will want to know my finance business to. I, and you got to be careful about that because I have friends who are, you know, in the real estate business. There are attorneys and whatnot. Friends. I don't know how much I want my friends that I don't know if they're really my friends or not to be up in my books. On my personal business. And this is going to show a little bit later on this episode. But anyway. So according to Jen's story. Her husband. So she thought her husband was paying for this um, apartment the whole entire time. And she didn't have to pay anything. And unbeknownst to her she found out he was only paying half of it. But what doesn't make sense to me is why are. I don't understand why she expected her husband, who she's trying to get divorced from, divorced from, to pay that. And this was a problem with Jen that I had last season. She's too, she needs to grow up. I will say this, she needs to grow up. I feel like she's a grown woman with kids that has a mentality or sheltered um, kind of personality of like a 20-something year old. I feel like she's kind of living a midlife crisis, to be honest with you. Um, she's with this bad boy who doesn't even look good on paper. Um, and then besides the bad boy situation, she <laughs> she's doing yoga. She's at She has her own yoga studio. And for a reason, she thought that would be enough to make a living living in California. And I'm saying California, the state, because even if she lived in northern, northern California, that would not be enough. <laughs> She's in the OC, which is equally as pricey. That's one of the more pricier places in California. I mean, it's not LA County, but it still ain't cheap. It's not Silicon Valley, but it's still not cheap. It's not the Bay, but it's still not cheap, you know? I mean, I don't even think she could, I don't even think she'll be all right living in Sacramento with that. Maybe Sacramento. Maybe. I kind of doubt that, though. I doubt it. And so I'm a little confused by Jen's um, delusions. I'm going to need her to get it together. I did find in this dinner that she was being very negative while talking to Ryan about this whole situation. And Ryan is, like, not doing her any favors. Is giving her, like, well, what about this? What about this? Just helping her like with these pipe dreams. And you got to be aware of someone who's giving you that kind of overly positive energy when the, when the things are real. That is a little bit worrisome for me. Um, and we'll find out throughout the season why this might be a concern. Because, <laughs> oh, things are not clear with that dude at all. But anyway, so... The divorce is clearly not divorcing. And also another thing that I found kind of interesting is they're going out to eat and they both get Malibu drinks. Like Malibu and like, um, and soda. Not to be a judgy boots, but I'm sorry. I haven't drank Malibu since like I was like, I don't know, barely 21. Malibu is kind of a cheaper rum. I ain't gonna hold you. Not, and so I'm kind of like, I mean, maybe you should be drinking that because now we know your financial situation and maybe that was kind of like an Easter egg to let us know that the money's funny. 
But man, I just don't understand. I, I'm just confused by the whole situation. And we're going to find out more as things progress with this. But it's just super confusing how she just thought. Oh, and then also, too, after as she's expressing this, Ryan wants her and the family to move in with him so badly. And that worries me. I feel like she's, and, and she is being cautious about that too, but her cautiousness is not the right kind of caution. Her caution is more or less like, well, what if we don't work out? It's not about, it, she, she still, her priorities are not priority. <laughs> I, I'm still confused why she's still expecting a man to take care of her. She needs to get off of that and work, get, get, do what she needs to do to make the coins. Or move out of Orange County. I mean, I know you want to be on the show or whatever, but girl, you have kids. Make it make sense. And I hate to be that person because I do like Jen as a person. It seems like from the show, how it's been presented. But I'm also, I, I, I understand Tamara. <laughs> I hate to understand Tamara. Because if that was my friend, I wouldn't have said it the way Tamara did. I wouldn't have done it all on camera. I would have just said all that behind the scenes. But, and I feel like we're going to get Tamara doing more of it. And I don't know. After a while, you kind of have to look at Tamara. Is Tamara completely wrong in all this? Unpopular opinion. I, I know. I know. I know. But anyway, moving on. Side note, I probably should have said that this review was going to be super long just because I've never reviewed this show with you guys. I'm trying to give you a little bit of a backstory of how things went last season and a little about who, about who all these people are. And also, to another side note, there's like eight of them. This is a large Real Housewife cast. Um, <laughs> I was kind of like, whoa, that's a lot of people in the cast this season. Um, yikes. <laughs> Let me just double, I want to quadruple check it, but I'm almost positive there's a, yeah, yeah there's eight. There's eight. If you include the friend of, there's eight of them. So, it, this is going to be a long review. Hopefully, the following episodes won't be, but this is going to be long. And also, too, this was a long episode. The first episode was kind of a little bit of a longer episode because it was giving a recap of everyone. So, I'm doing the same thing as what the show did. They gave you a recap, but then also showed you what's going on with them. But also, too, I'm kind of trying to also let you know what happened last season. Because in order for you to understand the recap, you need to kind of know what happened last season. And know these people's personalities before you get into the show. At least I feel that way. So, forgive me for this being a super long review. But this one's going to be a little bit longer. I just kind of wanted to give you... I should have gave you that PSA at the beginning. But yeah. Anyway, moving on from that. Um, <laughs> we had... Heather, Emily, and Alexa, Alexis meeting up for drinks. So this is the infamous Alexis, Jesus Jugs. And Heather and Alexis are friends. Oh, side note. So the um, scene that Heather and Terry had together, she did explain that she's going to be throwing a New Year's party situation, a New Beginnings party, um, because... Last season was a pretty rough season for Heather. Like, all the girls were going against her. Um, but now, in between the reunion and this new season, she's pretty much patched things up with most of the girls, minus Shannon. Um, everyone else in her, everyone else, she's in good terms with. And so she's throwing this party, but she also mentioned she's going to invite Alexis because she's been friends with Alexis this whole time. And then they show past scenes of previous seasons where they, they were cool, like, I think it was season 12 that they showed and stuff like that. Like, they they are actually legitimate, legitimately friends. So, she did invite Alexis. But we know the also the other reason why she invited Alexis. Because Alexis has a drama. Because she's dating Shannon Bedore's ex, John. And so, Alexis is... Um, Alexis is basically describing how her and John are... To Emily and Heather. Heather is being the supportive friend. And Emily's side eyeing the whole situation. Because. Emily is me. In this situation. <laughs> Emily is me. But. Um, out of nowhere. Alexis comes in super hot. 
and tries to basically check Emily for the comments that Emily said about um, Sean on uh, Tamara's podcast that she has with, oh my gosh, Tamara and uh, Teddy, Teddy Mellencamp's um, podcast, um, Two T's in the Pod. Um, basically, Emily mentions that That John's a douchebag. And in the confessional, this confessional, Emily doubles down and says, no, nah, he's a douchebag. This is Rich of <laughs> Alexis, who's only known this man for 15 minutes to say that he's not a douchebag when we've been around him and we've known him for years. Like, which is true. John and Shannon were together and they were on the show together for multiple seasons. And so. <laughs> the one thing that I forgot to mention. About Alexis. I think I feel like I tried to allude to it a couple times. She's not the smartest girl. Or lady or woman. She just is not smart. She definitely. There's a little bit of air. Here. A little bit of air. Just a little bit. Um, and this was, I ain't gonna hold you, this was a moment where I'm just kind of like, girl, <laughs> you are not, like, I was hoping with this new look of you coming back, you've wisened up, but this is not, I think, um, Alexis thinks that this is giving a different energy than what it is, and I'm, think, I feel like we're all just looking at you like, girl, <laughs> you're great for drama, but what the heck? <laughs> So anyway, from there, they talk about, so Alexis, how do you feel about seeing Shannon at the party? Um, number one, they're not sure if Shannon's going to show up, but how do you feel she's going to show up? It's part of her job. But, <laughs> but like, our, how do you feel about her showing up at the party? And she's like, I don't feel a way about it. We could talk about it and just keep it pushing. We're ground. The typical answer that you give before we know how it's going to go. Anyway. That pretty much concludes that. After that, we have a short scene with Shannon and her lawyer talking about the DUI and talking about how if she, after the three years of probation, because this is when we find out she's on probation for three years, um, she does have the opportunity if she successfully completes the three years probation to, um, you know, contest the charges and have the charges dropped. Shannon feels like that's not a good look for her to do um, because, you know, she did it and she doesn't, you know, want to do that. And the lawyer's like, hey, but you have every right to do it. Like anyone who completes probation for that has a right to do it. And I feel like the only reason why she would feel a way about, and I guess for me, I would have guilt too about it. But if I really did do the work, I'm going to contest it if I can. Now, if it's going to cost more money for me to contest it, and it's actually me really going battling the courts, probably not. And also, too, I think the other reason why Shannon would not feel okay about doing that is because she's a public figure. So that would get out there if she was to do that, potentially, I feel like. So... A step, so it's not a good look if she's to do that. So, the, and really, it, I really, I guess also too, the other thing is, why have the charges dropped if you are one and done with it? Just let it be there. So I kind of agree with Shannon more and more. I talk about it. Like, if this is not going to be a repetitive thing, it doesn't matter if you drop the charges or not. You know, if it's hurting from getting a job or jobs, then yeah, get the charges dropped. But because she's more of a public figure and she's more of an entrepreneur, it may not be necessary. So I think it really just depends on your situation, what you got going on. Um, but I will, I will say this. If she's not doing the work, she should just live with those charges. And I think that's where it needs to be. If she's really not doing the work, 
Because also, too, she's doing four, she was also assigned 40 hours of community service and she's doing it through her church. So, and I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how I feel about that. She says it's been very rewarding and everything. But when I hear someone who's a public figure or celebrity saying they're doing something through their church, I'm like, if you're doing something that you already would have been doing outside of this, is that really community service? Just, or is that a tax write-off? Because you doing it through your church, that could be potentially a tax write-off, right? So, anyway, that's pretty much it with that scene. After that, we have another short scene with Tamara and her daughter. Um, and her, this is her youngest daughter who just turned 18 and they're getting a tattoo together. Jara's getting a star. And then um, Tamara's getting a tattoo here. 1111. And then she, they basically recap how Tamara used to not be okay with her kids getting tattoos. But now she embraces it. As long as none of them to get a tattoo in her face. But then we do get the heartbreaking thing about her and Sydney, her, her oldest daughter. She still hasn't talked to her. Um, for those who don't know, she has a strange relationship with her daughter, Sydney, because her first husband, not Eddie, Eddie's the current husband who's been on the show forever, but her original, show, but her original husband, or her, <laughs> her first husband, the one that, that we were introduced to when we met Tamara, um, cause Tamara's like the second old, old G of like, of the Real Housewives. Like, she was the next one that came up after, um, Vicky. So she's the second, like, longest cast member. I mean, she got fired and then they, they brought her back last season. Um, anyway, so we thought, um, her first husband, basically she was a trophy wife with her first husband, but she wasn't really fulfilled and Eddie's really the guy that she wants like aesthetically and everything like they definitely are they seem like they're compatible um and her first husband was kind of a guy with money <laughs> like your typical suburban housewife type thing and when the divorce happened it was a nasty divorce and basically Cindy took Simon's side and she's never seen, she's never seen him again. Never, haven't seen Sydney since. Because Sydney took, um, you know, the husband's side. And um, Tamara gets emotional and it, it's kind of sad. But anyway, that's it for that. Um, the next thing we have um, Gina and Travis house, um, talking about the house hunting. And this is where after... You know, earlier on where Gina and Emily were talking about this. And now we're seeing Travis and how Travis just looks. Along with how Gina's looking when they're interacting. This is where I'm like, something's missing from the story. Something else has happened here. That I think G on the Gina side, she's not telling us. And I don't know if we're going to find out during the season. But she's not sharing everything that's happened here. I don't think it's necessarily just a case of them growing apart. I think she got sick of supporting him financially. I think that's really what it is. But she doesn't want to say that. And um, because, again, it's just odd to me that For one, it seems like this kind of came out of nowhere. But for two, it seems like it's been a contentious thing a little bit from the beginning. And maybe at the beginning, it was a breath of fresh air for her because she had a little bit more control in this relationship versus her relationship with her ex-husband. So maybe at the moment it worked, but it's one of those things where long term, it, again, she had an up, uphill battle. And on top of it, you know, if you go from one long, long-term relationship to another, the lifespan of that typically is not great um, because essentially you're using that new person as a rebound, especially if they're kind of the opposite of who you dated before. It, it usually doesn't last. Um, <laughs> so, and I think Gina has definitely been glowing up. Like last season was the first season I actually kind of liked her. Um, I don't like how she treats um, Heather. 
I don't like that at all. Um, but outside of that, I kind of do, you know, and I also don't like how Gino sometimes likes to put 20 on 10 on certain things. But outside of that, I was actually kind of somewhat starting to like her last season. But we'll see how long that lasts because I feel like this season she's going to be back to her little, her, her uh, messy ways. But anyway, that's, that's it on that. Okay, next, it is the day of the party. Um... And the ladies were getting, you know, glammed up and ready to go. Tamara is um, talking to Eddie. And <laughs> I noticed the Nat's doing her hair. And for those who don't know, when I say the Nat, I'm talking about Teddy Mellencamp. Um, Garcelle called her the Nat, so therefore I call her the Nat. Anyway, the Nat's in the background doing her hair, so she's getting some camera time. Very good on her part. Um, and... Shannon is with Glam and not wanting to appear. And she basically says she doesn't want, she'd rather get her, her teeth pulled out than go to this party. But she's going to show up and show out because she doesn't want to look weak. And I'm like, that is literally the most Aries thing I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> that's some Aries petty stuff. That's how we got, that's, child, that's how we roll. You're not going to tell me I can't come to this event. I'm going to come to this event. I don't care if you introduce me to this group. I'm going to come. And I'm going to act like you ain't here. And if you approach me, I, don't don't ask none. There won't be none. That's some Aries. That, that. <laughs> when she said that, I was like, I felt her on that one. I was like, yup. <laughs> don't look weak. You better show up. And you better make sure you look good, too. In the, in the meantime, like, show up and show out. And, yeah, anyway. So, besides that, um... So then Jen is also getting ready with Glam. And I put a question mark in front of my notes on that because I'm like, why do you have Glam if you're getting evicted? Even in Tamara's case, her Glam, she knew one of them. And I don't know if maybe Jen has the same thing where she knows the people and they're not getting paid. But I kind of don't believe that. And this is, this is why I went in on Jen earlier on in this video. Because the priorities are not prioritizing. And it makes me feel like... I hate that like aesthetically... Gina definitely is the one that seems like she ain't got the money. But the it's definitely Jen who ain't got the money. The money is funny. I mean, Gina can't dress. I mean, it's gotten better. It's gotten a lot better. Gina's dressing game has went up. But, I mean, she looks the most regular. She, Her and Emily give regular, regular energy. That's just how they get. That's just how they are and that's how they get. But... It seems like in both cases, them two are the most, like the more fiscally responsible ones um, between the ones that give that energy versus what you're seeing outwardly. And I, I don't know. <laughs> I'm going to leave it alone, but that's all I'm going to say there is why does she have glam? She's getting evicted. <laughs> I don't. Also, um. Ryan does say he's not going. He's not going to the party. And then um, Ryan asks, like, so how do you feel about me and the ladies? And Jen's like, I'm cool with like meeting everyone except for Gina. We found out later on why. Um, anyway, and I kind of alluded to it earlier on. Um, but Gina will add more the seasons to it, the saison to it to let you know why. Anyway. Because the feeling is mutual. So, Gina, no glam. She's doing her own makeup. Again, fiscally responsible. I mean, it doesn't give aesthetically the best view or look for a housewife show. But why are we going broke to aesthetically keep up with the Joneses? I'd rather you stack up your coins and stack up your bread and do regular degular all day. And then low-key be rich. 
I don't know. I, that would be how I would give it up anyway. Like, and for someone who's originally from Indiana, that's how a lot of people with the money be doing it. Because a lot of people from Indiana, don't get it twisted, people move to Indiana because it's cheaper. But, and the taxes are fairly low. Um, it's not Florida or Texas, but the cost of living is, kind of, actually, it's probably better than, um, it's probably better than most of Florida. But it's just a state taxes thing. But anyway, the whole point is, you see where I'm coming from when it comes to that. Anyway, so, oh, Gina also mentions that she's bringing Katie. And Katie's a new housewife that we're going to meet shortly. I feel like next episode we're going to learn a little bit more about her. We, we get a little bit about her this episode, but we know that's not the reason why we're here. They had to squeeze a lot in this one episode. But anyway, so then um, Tamara talks to Eddie about Alexis. And Eddie's like, wait, Alexis is going to be there? Because, again, that lawsuit situation. That impacted both of them. Because, you know, Eddie's her husband. And Tamara's like, well, at BravoCon, her, uh, Alexis and her, they talked it out and they made up. And it turns out that, according to Alexis, her and her husband, her ex-husband, were divorced when all that was happening. So that... You know, she had nothing to do with it. Um, <clears throat> but we'll find out later on why there's a view one way and a view another way. Anyway. But anyway, Tamara decided to let it go. She's like, yeah, I'm cool. Like, it's fine. And Eddie's like, I don't really trust Alexis, but okay. I wouldn't either based off of just how she's moving, but that's neither here nor there. And then um, Alexis and Emily are going together. Um, also, side note, I probably should have mentioned this. Alexis and Shannon, um, they were never on the show together at the same time, really. So they're not really friends like that. Um, and then they, they, I don't even think they were ever really castmates. Because I don't think they were ever on the show at the same time. So just to let you know on that. So it's not like Alexis is, date, is a former friend of hers dating her, her ex-man. It's just all just, it's just all super messy though, just because what it is. Um, not to, not to give her any bail or, or post her any bail on that. It's all wrong. It's all just messy and wrong. I still will steer far away from that because never mind. I'll keep my thoughts to myself. I'll wait when Gina says what she says and then we'll, we'll get into that more. <laughs> So then, anyway, they're heading to the, everyone's heading to the party now. Um, Alexis and um, Emily, they're going together in the car. Katie, who we find out is actually friends with Sutton, um, is on her way. So she meets up with Gina and they go there together. And then Gina catches up pretty much completely catches her up with all the drama that's about to happen, about to pop off, so she's not unaware and doesn't end up, like, effing around and finding out. So she's like, okay, all right. <laughs> and I think part of it that's a huge difference with this is Katie so far, she's like, this ain't got nothing to do with me, but, man, this is Super Bowl tea. Like, I I'm ready. <laughs> it's, it's given that. Anyway, so... Then we go over to Heather, and she's getting the party ready. Um, and one thing about Heather, if you have never watched the show, Heather can throw her a party. The party be bougie as all get out, but that's that's kind of where I am, so I'm with it. I'm completely with it. And Heather does do a callback and kind of gives a hard time about how Emily gave her a hard time about how bougie her parties are. But that's where Emily could just should just sit back and just sit there and just eat her food. And I'm not fat shaming her. That's just what we say. Because I know Emily's sensitive to that kind of talk. It, it comes, it came in multiple seasons that she feels away when you talk about her in any type of way like that. And as someone who's bounced back and forth between the weights, um, the scale be fluctuating for me. I really wish Emily had that 
same kind of energy as I got when it comes to how that feels. It is what it is. I guess me now at my age, and I'm like the same age as Gina and Emily, I think. You know, when I'm bigger, I think I look good. When I'm smaller, I think I look good. The bottom line is, I know I look good. I just wish she had that kind of energy. I got, I got clothes in the cock closet for when I'm fit and lean. I have clothes in the closet for when I'm a little thicker. I just have a threshold how thick I'm going to be. <laughs> I will never let it go too far. Cause, but that's just me. I wish others, it's not, this is not even just the Emily talk. I just wish everyone had that same kind of energy. And it takes time to get there because it took me a long time to get to that point in my life. I really didn't really start giving the energy of why I put, tried to project out there that I don't care until like, I would say like 34, 35 is where I really was like, child, I don't care. <laughs> and now when I say that, I mean it. <laughs> and you know, I know being on TV probably adds a little bit more pressure, but when you look good, you look good. It doesn't matter, right? Right. Anyway, um, <laughs> so from there, we also, um, so as Heather's getting ready, Lauren is there and Lauren is a friend that we met last season. I think she was trying to become friend of the show. I risk, I know, I hope she makes more appearances because I do want her to be on this show. It will be nice, it will be nice to see some on the show. But anyway, so she's there at the party also. And Gina and um, <laughs> Jen have an awkward interaction because the ladies are all kind of showing up one by one by one. And Gina and Jen have an awkward interaction. And I'll go more into that shortly. Child, the way I'm editing and trying to do this review at the same time is nuts. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, back to this. Uh, what was I going to say? Oh, so the interaction between um, Jen and Gina was interesting. It was very telling. So it's more on Gina's side. Gina is side-eyeing um, Jen. And the reason why Gina is side-eyeing Jen is because Gina put in a good word for her to get her place that she's in now, only to get evicted. So it sounds like from Gina's perspective, because she's a real estate agent, maybe she got that on a deal, or maybe she ended up getting, you know, a heads up on the property sooner rather than later, because it sounds like she may know the people that she worked with to get that property. Um, Cause as we know from last season, Gina's new to the real estate world and making her money this way. So right now she's getting her connects based off of her connections to everyone she knows, um, which is smart and the way to do it. And then you build your clientele up from there. And because, you know, she's a mom and everything and knows the people and I guess in some ways, child, the social climbing makes sense. If you're going to social climb, make it make sense to do it. And she's making it make sense. So I'm starting to, mm, my opinion of um, Gina's starting to change. I ain't going to hold you. She's kids. <laughs> you know, when you got family and kids, you do what you got to do. If social climbing is what I got to do to do what I need to do, fine. As long as you're trying to do things to be respectable, and whatever your, your version of respectability and boundaries are, do what you need to do. Okay? As long as the kids are safe, they're fed and all that, you do what you got to do. Because at the end of the day, especially based off of what I mentioned earlier, Gina, you know, she's kind of moving like a single parent a little bit. Because she kind of is. You know, even if the money wasn't, even if Travis was pulling the weight the way he should be based off of what we're seeing on the show, she still would need to move like a single parent, right? Because that's her boyfriend. That's not her husband. I don't care if they live together. That's not her. That is not her husband. 
you know, and you literally just got out of a situation where your husband was not reliable. So she has every right to be financially independent, which also might be why Jill, this might also be why Gina is looking at Jen funny because I'm kind of cut from the same, I'm cut from a similar cloth as um, Gina, except for I wouldn't be hopping from relationship to relationship. I'm on a, I'm a little bit more on the extreme case of being independent. I'd rather be by myself than, you know, any of that. <laughs> I ain't trying to do none of that. Um, you know, but I kind of get that because and it's something, the reason why I think I'm identifying with Gina more too is because I struggle with this in my friends just the past couple of years. I'm a little bit, I'm projecting by a lot. I am projecting a lot right now. Um, one of the things that I have struggled with, um, especially when um, I had a roommate, is she just got out of a divorce. And she was moving like Jen, similar to Jen. She tried to do the independent thing and it got too hard. And I, I know not everyone's cut, you know, cut through that cloth, but because I have traumatic reasons of why I'm the way I am, because the dependent thing on my, when it comes to my family, this is me shedding a little bit of life, why, how I am as a person and a little bit more of my background. A lot of the women on my mom's side especially have been, there's been some financial abuse because of them, be, them being dependent. Not everyone, and also, t it, but it, it's been a thing. And seeing all that growing up and seeing how toxic that could be, being with a partner holding their, your livelihood over their head because they are the breadwinners and you're not because of the old status quo of the man makes the money and the woman stays at home trope. I told myself as a little girl, that will never be me. <laughs> I said it from the beginning. I was like, oh, uh-uh. Nope. 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 And nope. It will never be me. And I almost did go that direction. As soon as I saw I was going that direction, I exit stage right immediately. I sabotaged the hell of the situation and got out of that. Because I, I found, especially in my earlier years, I was doing that for a little bit. And I was like, what am I doing? I am not, uh, I'm not, I'm not built like that. I'm just not. I'm an independent girl. I gotta be able to do what I need to do. Uh, I don't care if I got five jobs, <laughs> like, we're going to get it, <laughs> you know, we're going to get to it. You know, that's just how, that's what's in my head. I have that in my mind, like, mm -mm. nope, nope. I mean, trapped in something I want to be in, period. Like, even, you know what, that's a story time for another day. I can get more into my, the, that bag of why and all the other times where I've had situations where I've been tried and I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, maybe I look like Susie Homemaker to you, but I, and maybe because I'm multifaceted and I can cook and all that, but I'm not that girl. I, <laughs> child, no. Anyway. So back to the original topic though, Gina and, um, Gina's looking at her funny because she's like, I vouch for you and you literally have a whole entire eviction happening. And she's like, I want to say something to her about that, but I don't know if she knows, which I feel like that's the other thing that Gina's looking at her sideways. Like, how do you not know what's going on with you and your finances? Like you need to take care of business. Especially as someone who has kids, like take handle your business. And I don't know. And, and so Jill, so, so really Gina's looking at her funny for that reason. And, and so she knows about the eviction because of the fact that she, she basically did business with her, you know, 
And my whole thing is if you don't think, if you don't know if your money's funny or not, that's, that's problem number one. Problem number two, if you think your money is funny, you do not get your friends involved in that. Okay? The less people know about how funny your money is, the better. As someone who formerly, money used to be a little funny because we've all been there. Okay? We have all been there. And honestly, we're all one paycheck away. A lot of us in the United States of these Americas are one paycheck away to be money being funny. Let's be real. It, this is not, I am not shaming people when it comes to their finances and their situations. Everyone is, uh, uh, most people in the United States, unless you're a one percenter, is literally one paycheck away for your money being funny. Because most people don't have a savings account. Most people do not have a savings. You know? And that's just real. Especially if you're somewhere like in like California or even like in New York or I'm trying to think of a Hawaii or hell, some parts of Chicago, you know, or I mean, even if you're, if you're in a major city or even like a semi-major city, well, really any major city, to be honest, if you're living beyond your means. That's the other thing, too, and that's another struggle that a lot of us have, and it is definitely an American thing. A lot, really capitalism as a whole, but hold our subject here or there. I keep getting on this soapbox, and I want to stop. That's going to be another, We maybe we need to do another subject when it comes to all that, because, child. Anyway, moving on. So then, here, so on the other side, we have Heather, Tamara, and Emily, and they're recapping Emily's meeting with Shannon. And we find out that Shannon's still drinking. And, um, which is, number one, that is a violation of probation. Oh, she knows that. And she's admitted now on TV. Because if you're in alcohol classes, you're actually supposed to not be drinking. And when you're on probation for a DUI, you're not supposed to be drinking for a year. So that's interesting that they're airing this because that's totally a probation violation. She shouldn't be drinking at all. Um, and no judgment. No judgment. I don't, I'm not going to say that she's an alcoholic. I think a lot of the ladies are trying to allude to that with her. Because prior to this DUI, which by the way, the DUI happened, I think a week or so after the reunion or a couple months at the reunion, after the reunion, after the ladies were confronting her about her having a drinking problem potentially. And then it kind of blew up in her face that, okay, now you basically gave the ladies ammo to say, okay, we were right. I think you have a drinking problem. Um, but you know, it's just not a good look that she said that. And she's, well, and, and, and she's being truthful. Well, maybe she's being truthful. Maybe she said the two drinks to sound, you know, good, but really she's drink, still drinking more. But the problem is she's drinking still, and I that the ladies all are kind of judging her for that. But anyway, so then, as they're all doing this talking, Shannon Bedore, look, wearing all black like the omen. Don't you know it? Y'all better know where that came from. Wanna rumble with the bee, huh? Bzz, and then for the whole family dressing all black like the omen. But okay, sorry. I hate who that is under, because that is not under a little Kim EP or the locks or Biggie. It's under someone who needs to be under the jail. But that's an iconic verse. You have to admit that. But anyway, so Shannon Storm Bredor shows up in all black and she's looking like a snack. And she looked good. And she 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 did that. She that was some Aries energy. She's like, I'm about to go in here and put it on them and like it and do it on them. And she did it on them. She showed up, she's like, hey. Everyone's like, oh my gosh, you look amazing, which she does. She's lost the weight because she had a little bit of that pudge, um, alcohol related pudge on her. She lost the weight. She's looking good, looking like a million bucks and looking unbothered, talking to the ladies. And then Gina, you know, addresses the elephant in the room like, hey, I hope you're doing okay. 
I know we had the talk. We had a rough. We 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 never been friends, even though we tried to be friends. I, I'm not gonna hold this UI over your head. Like she, Gina's trying to say, I'm gonna take the high roll, even though you didn't take the high roll on me. I'm gonna try to take that high roll on you. Kind of saying it without saying it. Um, and Shannon caught it and went with it. She's like, you know what? And fully apologized finally to her for basically unnecessarily dragging Gina last season for a mistake that she made years ago. You know, so and Gina was like, oh my gosh, I never thought that would happen. Whatever version of Shannon this is, let's keep that. And so after that, immediately Shannon sees Alexis and Alexis is like, hey, let's talk. They went out to go talk and <laughs> being quirky as Shannon is, because Shannon's quirky. That's another thing that's wild about Shannon, why she's so entertaining to watch. She's so freaking quirky. So she is trying to um, move the tables so that, like, according to her, she's moving it so that they're in the shade because they are talking outside. But I think she was doing it so that not everyone is seeing <laughs> what they're talking about. I think that's really what's happening. And the ladies are still trying to be nosy. They're all just like this, like out, like at the window looking at stuff, just being nosy is all good out. And Gina, as the ladies are doing this, said the most realest thing ever. And I was like, this is what I was spot on. She's like, this is just so lame. <laughs> and the ladies are like, what? I'm like, why are they fighting over this dude? He's a douchebag. He's trash. The, the D can't be that damn good. Neither of it is. I don't want it. That's ick. And I'm just like, bingo. Because again, keep in mind, Shannon Bador, I think Alexis might be in her late 40s, early 50s. And Shannon's also in her 50s. So these are your mama and daddies. This, these are your mama mamas. And you know, technically Shannon's old enough to be a grandma that's arguing over a man that ain't ish and has shown his character on our screen. I, and you can't, you can't blame that on editing that he ain't ish and he's a social climber. And they're arguing over this man. And Really, Shannon, I think, knows how that looks. So Shannon, because <laughs> I'm about to say with Shannon, how Shannon led with this conversation. Because Shannon was smart about it and knew how it looked. So she didn't even lead with that. Alexis, on the other hand, I don't think, I don't think she knows that she looks goofy. And just looks like, she looks so dumb. And so it makes me think and look back to the second season that she had. That she looked crazy. I don't think that was editing. I think editing was being nice to her the first season, and then now they're, we're seeing what we see with her. I think, I don't know. Let me know what y'all think, but <laughs> this is not a good look on her end. But anyway, so Shannon immediately, instead of talking about <laughs> the John thing, Shannon leaves with the lawsuit situation, which happened, by the way, I forgot to mention this. This lawsuit situation happened years ago. It's not recent. This happened back in the 2010s. And not like 2019. Like the 2010s, 10s. Like, I think almost 10 years ago. This is not a recent lawsuit. At all. And so that's the other reason why Tamara's reasoning behind it makes more sense. Because she's like... You know, whether you have something to do with it or not, at the end of the day, it's done. And Shannon's like, no, I need that money. You know, what the heck? And so she's leading with that about how that lawsuit hurt her feelings and all that. And Alexis the whole entire time's like, well, the lawsuit has nothing to do with me, but I think you're really mad about the John thing. <laughs> so she just keeps trying to bring up the John thing and... It is, this is it's the most like goofy, craziest argument I've ever seen ever. Because 
they're two, they're talking, they're arguing, but they're talking about two different things. Shannon's deflecting, refused to talk about the John situation, while Alexis is claiming that she had nothing to do with that lawsuit, which I believe her because I don't think she's intelligent enough to do all that. But I think her ex-husband was being shady and used her name. Because I think I think what happened with that lawsuit, I think it was a case of he had the lawsuit, he had the law, he knew he was gonna do the lawsuit and had her sign whatever. Cause she was one of those wives, like trophy wives that just signed whatever that you know Bill gave her. So he probably she probably had no idea what she was signing. And then it turned out it was that lawsuit. Um but Shannon's just like, you knew about the lawsuit. So they're arguing about two different things. And then Alexis explodes on her. She's like, I'm not going to talk to you about this anymore. The lawsuit happened this many years ago. You need to get over it. If you can't get over it, that's not my problem. I think you're more mad that I have your man now. That's literally how it sounds like. She's like, I have your man now. And I'm like, girl. <laughs> At your big age, you're arguing over a man. That ain't got no money or nothing. A dusty. Really? Anyway. It's giving pick me energy. And. Shannon looked better on this side. To me. Than. Alexis. But. That's where the episode ends at to be continued. And. I think we're in a. We, we're in for a good treat when it comes to this show. Um. But anyway, that does conclude it. I'm sorry this review was super long, but there's just a lot to cover. But please like, comment, subscribe to the channel if you get anything out of the content. It's your girl Sharon, aka the Mel Nostalgic Runner, and I will see you next time. Bye.